Hi, everybody. I am Bill Bennett, host of Wise Guys, and welcome to our Thanksgiving table. And Ari Fleischer, former press secretary at the White House and a Fox News contributor. And from our mom's side, we have Erin Elmore. She is the Turning Point USA ambassador. She is also um, a former RNC deputy press secretary, right? right? Deputy press secretary. And, and my fun fact, I was on The Apprentice with Donald Trump. That's so. right. So we have a little reality TV connection. Um, and a lot of times Thanksgiving dinner can feel like reality TV. So we're glad you're here. Yes. And my good friend Sarah Carter is here. She is a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Forum and also one of our favorite Fox News contributors. Thank you so much, Rachel. No, and not I'm on the afraid. apprentice. Yeah. <laughs> You're fired. Can I that I was on a reality TV show? Really? What, what show was that? The White House, 2000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Orphan run. Lives in over the past year that we're thankful for. And so we have to go through that ritual. But you know, listen, we're controlled chaos in our house. So Billy, I love your rules and I read them. I think these are fantastic. But we try to get them to sit down, dress up, say what they're thankful for. And, you know, not destroy the table after you say, <laughs> say, say, say the opening prayer. Yeah, that's right. That's for, right. For me, it's what happens before you get to the table. So if you're the guest, please try to bring something additive to the party, whether it's a side dish or a bottle of wine. Nice. Please help set the table. Please also don't just sit there and watch football for five hours. Uh, Thank you. Get up. Yes. Do your part. I don't care if you're my husband's <laughs> eating and you're a father. Sorry. You have to help do something too. So everyone has to help just do a little something. And don't be impolite. Just say, hey, may I help you or how can I help? And by the way, one simple thing. Can the men just flush the toilet? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Flush the toilet, no football. Okay. <laughs> really, pretty basic. Really they're like running away from your house. They're like running now. They're not even going to be there. The they're going to throw the food. I need. I need the toilet. Okay, All right. Oh boy. Well, Aaron, I guess I could make it for half of that because I do watch football. I'm so very honest. Well, I have a question. I'm surprised you don't have macaroni and cheese. Right. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. I have a brother who caters it every year, and he said it's the best thing they ever did, and wow. the, it, that's their tradition. I have a question for the ladies. Do you have a practice turkey? My wife makes a practice turkey. She's making us look bad this morning. I know. Oh, no, this no, woman no. is like, yeah. Yeah. A, oh, yourself, a, a for gravy, which is the number one. Oh, right. uh, and, you know, you can give an idea. Maybe you should have an immigrant, a recent immigrant at your t table okay. who appreciates the country so kids can hear that. But, I mean, I think it's a very, very good lesson. We try. Mrs. Bennett tries, I should say. Go around the table. What are you grateful for? But, you know, gravy, you know, stuffing. <laughs> but, uh, but they're okay. They, they worked out okay. But it, Our history now is we're getting rid of everything that's meant to be American. That's right. And we're that's right. whitewashing this country so there is no history anymore unless it's perfectly PC. And it's almost like, although there were turbulent times with the Native American people, I think those are important things to talk about and discuss as well. So we do have that history. Sure. But breaking down those walls is not a good thing. I think we need to really reattach that history and Christopher Columbus, all of a sudden he's terrible too, and it's no, just no. really tragic and sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's our well, job as families, right? That we have to, uh, we have to, to teach our kids, and I think uh, Ari to go back and really. He has become a little more contentious, and families actually dread sometimes getting together because of politics. We don't talk politics because we don't want to. There are so many other good things to talk about, and that's kind of where we go naturally. And same thing with my family in Indiana, who are pretty much all Republicans. Um, it just doesn't come up. Washington, D.C. My family's pretty, it's it's a river in Egypt. There's a lot of denial. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a very, very big elephant in the room because my in-laws are practically new Bolshevik socialists. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I am clearly the opposite. And they're older, and my husband wants me to be deferent to them and respectful, so I am, but it's very hard. And Emily Post, you know, the icon of... Etiquette even has a hotline, I think, this year. Oh, does she? 1-800-HELP-ME-WITH-MY-IN-LAWS. <laughs> yeah. It's really help. But I will tell you this. I had one incident at a table. And when it, in, there, it was about Hillary, and someone said, well, if Donald Trump can be president, then anybody can. And it got quiet, and I said, anybody except your girl Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when that punctuation with the Civil War happened. Yeah. And although I did drop a bomb, and it was a good wine liner, I will tell you this, it didn't feel good. Yeah. So I'd rather just zip it and talk about football, your sweater, your trip to Malta. Yeah. Whatever it is that you'd like to talk about, I will go all the way around it, and I like that river in Egypt. I'm going to stick with that. Okay. I don't think Latins are like that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. You know, it would be MSNBC or CNN or Fox News, you know, and it was right at the beginning, and then it would be a big fight, and the fights would usually escalate. So it would start off slow. 
oh, Maria, she watches, oh, did I just say her name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you we'll know, bleep that. She watches, it's okay. <laughs> and then it would start to escalate, and then it would get really bad. We don't teach them how to discuss things civilly at home. When are they going to learn to do that? And I think that's when they become more susceptible to become snowflakes <laughs> um, and, and, and become indoctrinated as they get older and get more um, sort of into college and so forth. But the key word you said is civilly. A lot of civilly, the times this yeah. doesn't get they civil. can disagree. But sometimes but it has to be uncivil so they learn what uncivil looks like and then you can brain, brain it back. You know, there yeah. can't be so much. I'm sorry, I think that's hey, I worry start. about my husband because his parents are in their 80s and I want to be deferent to my husband and I am the outlier, generally speaking, in the family. And I want to be respectful to him and know that he loves his parents and he wants his parents to love me and vice versa. So I'd rather just go down that path of least resistance to just keep the peace long term with my family. You know what this sounds like is that the Thanksgiving table is in some ways a kind of, uh, you says what's wrong with our society, but it's a kind of a, an example of civilization. To find a conservative is like finding a leprechaun. Yeah. And I, all the time, it's like, hey, I like the work that you're doing out there. No, that's right. And it's good. Yeah. But back to our point is we all basically work in politics in one way or another. When we're debating with these people, doesn't it kind of feel like work? Yeah. And also, like, I don't want, I'm not here to work, I'm here to play. Like, let's have some wine, let's talk about something interesting. Yeah. But don't we also have the upper hand in a way? Because we're equipped, we know the talking points, we're on television. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like we can make them look really bad, but we almost have to hold back a little. Is, is it <laughs> it's a job. Is it, I agree with you, Rachel. I think politics is more intrusive in our lives than yeah. it should be. When that happened, there's, there were, I believe there's a very deep cultural shift that happened. And, mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what it is about Donald Trump. I have a few theories about, you know, how threatening he is to the other side. I believe it's because he is very, you come from The Apprentice. His name ID was almost 100%. I think he has a, a, a handle on culture. And he's driving and I'm walking my dog. And he stops me and says, I never want to talk to you again. I think you're horrible. I said, have we ever talked before? Yeah. <laughs> no, but we never will. I said, okay. All right, then. Totally gratuitous. But, but there's a serious point here. Glorious in the election was because people in Washington and lawmakers, as well as pundits, as well as analysts, forgot about the American people. Mm -hmm. They forgot to listen to them. We were so busy talking to each other and at each other that we forgot what the country was about. We forgot about things that made this country and make this country amazing. And you're right about social media. I think sometimes it's a distorted view of our lives as Americans. Mm -hmm. Go to Nebraska. I was in Omaha. I was in Minnesota. Um, I traveled recently. I'm going to spoke to people that haven't been spoken to ever by a politician. And that's why these were first time voters. They woke up and they said, I'm going to get behind this person because he truly understands me. And you hear these coastal elites and their gated communities and their private planes talking about fossil fuels. And it's just a joke. It, it's a laughing stock. It's like they're lambasting the rest of the but country in the flyover think, state. But I also think as, as a parent, be able to talk to children in a way most kids just want to blip through their day and mm -hmm. not have a little lecture from mom or dad. Mom or dad has to do it, though. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's oh. why college is so terrifying. Yeah. Right? It's the indoctrination of our children. What right. Is there, but, what do you do? You have to but fortify I think we, them first. You that's right. you, you got to equip them first. We equip them. We equip them. My daughter called and she... Meet after church and the guy says hello and he says, I'm not talking to you. Said, I've hated you for 60 years. I said, why? I said, I don't remember. But I know I hate <laughs> I you. Know I know I do. It was... Our, our kids came home from school. We don't talk like that in our house, mm -hmm. and so we, we want to go somewhere else. So there's even more burden, if you will, on the Thanksgiving table uh, to get these lessons across. They don't uh, do the to Pledge of Allegiance them. in many of these schools. My son's school doesn't even right. have the Pledge of Allegiance. You can't even be sure. Well, with all the contentiousness, we keep it light. I, was gonna, I don't have my phone to be rude just to show you a picture. Every year, my husband and son dress up in matching turkey or other costumes. Mm -hmm. So when in doubt... Wear a costume. So those are my turkeys. Your turkeys. <laughs> I don't know if Justin Trudeau agrees with that one. No. Well, yeah. this is an innocuous costume, and their faces have remained the same color. But that'll take that'll take the teeth and claws of any disagreement. Every year. Pop up in a turkey Every year outfit. Every a different costume. All right. Every year. All right. Well, frankly, listen to this. This is simple for a uh, recent immigrant, uh, a coach, uh, and uh, teach your children. Teach your children well. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.